What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike Dolce Show. You've, uh, I'm assuming you've seen the Game Changers movie. Yes. I, mean, yes. I know it's kind of a little, not old news, but you know, it's kind of like everyone's talking about it to begin with. But there was the strong man on there, and I used to host the World's Strongest Man, so I That's saw the right. strong man on there, and I was like, oh, this is cool. And he was purely, I don't know, it was vegan or vegetarian, but he was plant-based. But then I thought to myself, but what supplements is he taking to yeah. kind of show us how strong you are on plants? You know, there's also a ton of other strong men that are eating a lot of meat. I used to sit in a canteen with the meat and ostrich legs the size of this or whatever. But I just thought, you know, what other supplements are you taking to get that strength? You know, that isn't just a plant-based diet that's, that's achieving that. Um, and I think it was on Joe Rogan's podcast, because I think he recently did the whole, um, what do you call it, the omnivore, uh, sorry, carnivore eating yes. diet. And the guy from the, the Game Changers was on, was on the podcast with another scientist. And they were having this debate about how much protein was in a piece of lean beef compared. And the guy from the Game Changers movie was proving that with a peanut butter sandwich, you can achieve the same amount of protein. But I thought, well, fine, okay, same amount of protein, but do you want a lot of bread? And I don't know what the quality of the peanut butter is, and I love peanut butter, but you have to have a lot of peanut butter in order for it to sure. equivalent, you know, be the equivalent amount of protein. So just because something has the same amount of protein doesn't mean, well, it's just as good for you. You know, that's why with, with plant-based meals, I struggle a little bit because yeah, I can get the protein, but it's upping my carbohydrate massively. There's a lack of feeling of satiation for me personally. And yeah, do I think it's good for the planet to eat more plant-based more of the time? Yes. Do I try? Yeah, sometimes. But fundamentally, I just know what my body responds to. So yeah. I think a lot of these arguments, it, it just comes down to the individual. What do you respond to? You know, I have a training partner where of a similar physique, I'm a little bit taller. We train the same every day. She's a responder to carbs. Like she can have carbs with every single meal. That's great for her. She eats fats. It really affects her. You know, she feels sluggish. She feels like she gains weight. I mean, the other way around, like I can eat a lot of fat. I can eat a lot of saturated fat. I can eat a lot of fat and it doesn't really affect me. You know, my, my blood measures are good, etc. But too much carb, stodgy carb, you know, your pastas, your, you know, bread, etc. And I don't feel good. I feel sluggish. And I feel that's what affects my weight. So another thing is, you know, I've just learned over time that when people come to me and say, well, how do you eat? I should eat the same. I'm like, well, find out how you should eat for yourself. And I, I did one of those um, like DNA fit style tests. Sure. There's a few of them. And yeah, it proved everything I thought about myself, which is I'm good with fat, I'm really good with fat. And I need a little bit more careful with the amount of carbohydrate I put in it, my body. So yeah, I always say to people, get tested. And some of it, you just know yourself, you know, trial and error, what you eat. And just getting in tune with what the food you eat, how it makes you feel. Yeah. You know, like, you know, if you have a big, heavy, stodgy meal, you're going to feel a bit lethargic. That's okay on a Sunday if you're watching some football or whatever. But if you've got a day ahead of you or you want to feel good for a night out, it's probably not the the best choice so it just comes back to knowing how your body responds and just that intuition as to what it kind of needs and I need I just think that comes with time it comes with awareness it comes with trying to separate the emotional side from the practical side of what you know the, the reality of what your body needs so yeah, yeah. I would say yeah. test yourself don't just follow what other people are doing and, and get to know your own body agreed mm -hmm. we, we discuss mm -hmm. being intentional with your food choices and being yeah. mindful of how you feel so when, yeah. when I, I posted those seven or eight little points to which you know we really don't need that many it's just trying to yeah. kind of fill the characters on, on twitter but we go deeper you know, there's about 20 or so points of uh, principles but what we try and do is uh, you've never heard me no one's ever heard me talk about macros how many macros should you eat what should the ratio be what how many calories should you consume mm. per day i never mentioned that because i don't know so I had Dr. Andy Galpin on, on the show a year or so ago. Science still can't figure that out. The most sophisticated scientific equipment and brains and think tanks still can't figure that out. Well, some idiot influencer on Instagram or some you know, podcast with a few thousand members in his audience, they don't know that either. Mm. The only way that you can truly figure that out is what I feel following the principles of, of eating real food, non-processed food in wide varieties so you can really start to be mindful and intentional of well, how do i feel after i have white potato or white rice or black beans or quinoa or um, maybe oats or buckwheat you know or maybe strawberries or blueberries how 
how does that actually affect me? How does it digest? What is my mood like? And what we say is really it's about 15 minutes and 45 minutes after a meal. Just be mindful. Mm -hmm. How do I feel right now? Do you feel like you can push yourself away from the table and go for a light jog? That's what we say, eat until satisfied, not until full. Yeah. That's what we're trying to attain. And you know, being as fit as you are and active as you are, because we'll, we'll talk about the other aspects to your career also, the, the eating every you know, two to three, two to four hours or so, eating within those windows allows for these, let's say, three to 600 calorie meals multiple times throughout the day, allowing mm-hmm. you to get in all the vital micro and phytonutrients that you need to mm-hmm. operate at a cellular level which most people, they glance right over cellular activity. They go straight to macros, building muscle and, and shredding body fat. Mm-hmm. They have no concept of what's happening on a cellular level. So we really try and, and, and push down to the earth grown nutrients, which is more, has a greater nutrient density per calorie than any other processed food on the planet. Mm-hmm. So you can actually eat less total calories per day, be much more satiated, feel much better, preserve and build lean muscle tissue while reducing non-functional body fat. Yeah. And I didn't have to count a single calorie or weigh yeah. a food or I didn't have to do any of that stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's a much easier process. And you're just, you're living this lifestyle anyway. You, you eat yeah. two, every two, three hours, you're active, you know how your body responds. And yeah. you're certainly in, in the top 1% when it comes to fit humans walking the planet. 